now we're going to get into the scholarship recipients. This to me, for me, it's the, the best part of the evening to see um, the young folks do all of this amazing good work and be honored here tonight. Because young folks don't get honored enough. Let me say this, at the risk of seeming ridiculous, that the, truth the true revolutionary is guided by feelings of love. These are words of revolutionary Che Guevara. As I read Maya Noe's application, I thought of these words. In particular, I was struck by Maya's personal story of love for her family, LGBTQIA people, and justice for everyone. And this love inspired Maya's commitment to social justice work and activism. Too often social justice work is thought of as being only the transformation or change of masses, and the personal changes and transformations of individuals are often overlooked. Maya's story is one of working to create change in schools, and one of personal growth, identity development, and as well as family acceptance. I was inspired by Maya's story because it reminds me to be tough and active and challenging the world, and to be vulnerable and soft, en soft enough to deeply love myself, and my family. This is the work. This is our work. With great pleasure, I introduce to you Maya No. Senior at Logan High School in La Crosse, Wisconsin. I am so honored to be standing here this evening and to be receiving this award. I would like to begin by thanking the Gay Straight Alliance for State Schools Scholarship Committee for taking the time to read, to read my application and for giving me this opportunity. Also, congratulations to all who are being honored here this evening. As I was preparing for this speech, I was struggling to come up with something witty or funny to say, and after discarding more openings than I care to admit, I finally settled at beginning, starting at the beginning, my beginning, because really it has everything to do with why I'm here this evening. My parents are Melanie Fay and Alma Noel, two openly lesb lesbian women who have been partners for over 20 years. Melanie, an, ele an elementary school guidance counselor, is the rock of the Fanny family. Funny, efficient, neat freak. And Alma, a principal and former nurse, is the nurturer. Smart, sensitive, lover of life. Alma passed away suddenly, of Octo suddenly in October of last year, but I am here to represent both her and Melanie as a testament to their superior child rearing capabilities. <laughs> so the beginning. I was born in the South American country of Paraguay to a woman who I can only assume was poor, young, and unable to feed the mouths of all of her children. But lucky for me, I was soon adopted by my parents who were anxiously awaiting the arrival of their second adopted daughter. Growing up, my sister Zoe and I had a very magical childhood. From camping trips, national and international travels, and fairy houses in our lilac bushes, we were exposed to a world full of beauty and possibility. My, in, in the words of my friends, my childhood was earthy, folky, and non-traditional, description that I have come to take a great deal of pride in. But perhaps the most unique aspect of my childhood was the pair of non-judgmental eyes that was bestowed upon me, not only by my parents, but by the community of lesbian family members and family friends that loved me unconditionally. These women introduced me to and accepted me into their LGBT circles, and as early as the age of one, I was meeting some of the world's kindest and most interesting people. As a child, I saw no wrong in my family, content with not one, but two moms who spoiled me and encouraged my dreams. And equally, I loved the never-ending circles of aunts who took my sister and I and let us loose in the quick trip candy aisles whenever they came to visit. <laughs> and to be honest, it never even occurred to me that my life might be different. Most of my friends had heterosexual parents, but to us, there was no difference. I was also fortunate enough to attend a private Waldorf school that was kind and open and that set me up for some of the best years of my life. Similarly, there I came in no contact with discrimination. I had no reason for shame. But when I started to go to a public high school, I soon realized that I had been living a sheltered life. I found out early on that not everyone, everyone was so open about sexual orientation. Although my family was never the victim of, of, social, of social harassment of any kind, the topic of such, 
sexuality was relatively hush-hush. Before I came to my school, there had been talk of, of the creation of a gay straight alliance, but due to poor timing and busy schedules in general, but certainly not the lack of desire, their necessary steps in action had yet to be taken. So with the help of one of my wonderful advisors, Marsha Dell, who is here to, to support me tonight, a group of about, of about five of us like-minded students banded together to create something that we all felt passionately about. Three years later, we have presented within our own school to staff and students, visited other schools and conferences, recognized and participated in events like the Day of Silence, marched in local rallies, and passed out countless number of stickers to anyone who will take them. Since our creation, we have not, we have not only grown in numbers, but in spirits. And I'm continually grateful for the support that our staff has shown and the interest and kindness of the, that the, my, my peers exhibit. I stand here tonight as a result of a childhood and a lifestyle that has guided me to become open-minded and socially aware, one that is always challenging me to see the world from the bigger perspective. Without it, I would not be who I am today, and I'm confident and proud to say that I would not change a thing. My family is, is a unique and wonderful thing, and it has led me to find a unique and equally wonderful thing in the form of my high school's Gay Straight Alliance. This taught me an important lesson. You don't have to be LGBTQ to be an advocate for LGBTQ rights. You simply have to be a human and an advocate for human rights. And before I go, I would like to give a special thank you to Brian for his kindness, the entire staff at GSAFE, the other award recipients, and to my friends and family who came to support me tonight. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your evening.